The police, they'll help you. It was the cops that shot me. You got a price on your head. What you gonna do? I'm gonna expose them. Wow, that's a clip from arguably one of the most Woo! important films that's gonna be released this week. Yep. Starring our good friend, my little brother Tyrese Gibson is in it. Tyrese. Just here yesterday. Just here yesterday. Mike Coulter, our, our, our colleague who we've done Luke Cage with. Heather oh, B. that's right. Season one and two. That's right. Two seasons we got in there. Sway in the morning on Luke Cage. <laughs> and then we spoke um, highly about uh, the woman who's the lead actress in this film. And when you watch this film, it's definitely spellbinding to keep you on the edge of your seat. And once again, she delivers. Uh, and this isn't her first time delivering. DB, I'm going to let you do the honors, man. Please break down who we have in the building right now. Well, it's funny because uh, I was just watching Casino Royale the other day, and I never noticed. You know when you watch a movie and you, and you see something that you didn't catch the first time? So when uh, Vesper comes on the screen and she says, I'm the money, and he goes, every penny of it. And I never caught that. And then I was like, wait a second. And she plays Eve Money Penny in all the Bond films. She's got No Time to Die, which is coming up, which I cannot wait to see. Uh -huh. uh, I'm a huge Bond fan. And she's also been in Pirates of the Caribbean. But uh -huh. one of my favorites is always 28 Days Later because I'm a huge oh, horror fan. Wow. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Miami Vice. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. Miami Vice. I mean, she's done it all. And I'm glad to see her in this film, Black and Blue, because she has to do an, uh, a regular English-American accent uh -huh. and not her native English accent. So we have Naomi Harris here. Naomi Woo! Harris. Oh, what a welcome, guys. Thank you so much. No, we appreciate you. No, we appreciate you. You've done some powerful work. Mm -hmm. When you uh, list off all the different projects you worked on, it's such a diverse variety of characters and mm -hmm. roles you played. I'm, I'm assuming that's by design, correct? Yeah, absolutely, because uh -huh. I get bored really easily. So I'm like, <laughs> I have to keep switching it up for myself. Otherwise, I just get bored, yeah. Were, were you like a kid who had a short attention span? No. I wasn't I didn't know where that comes from because actually I'm really like I was really focused as a kid uh -huh. but somehow with acting and also the other thing about it is if you don't mix it up and play different roles then people put you in a box immediately okay. and they're like oh she's the actress who only does that mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. you're like I'm an actress so I can do so many other things and I see so many actors actually who get boxed really easily yeah. and they can't get out of it uh -huh. you know you're the, just the action person you're the really serious actress or you're the comedic actress and it's really hard once you people see you as that to break out of it so uh -huh. I was like, from the very beginning of my career, I'm going to do all kinds of things, and nobody's going to put me in any box. Wow, I like that. Round of applause. <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I got a daughter. So you said early in your career. What was like, how early did you start? So I started when I was nine years old. So yeah. you wow. felt that way at nine? No, no, no. That oh, came okay. a bit oh, later. Okay. That came okay. a bit like, later. That's a yeah. powerful yeah. nine year old. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, I'm wondering when you take the route of um, diversity, sometimes mm -hmm. that can be harder because when you do pigeonhole, you can get roles, I would imagine, easier because people yeah. are used to seeing you in some type of way. Did yeah. you find with making that decision to um, diversify your roles that it was more challenging? It definitely is harder. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I took the, the tough road, but it's, it's really paid off. And mm -hmm. it's paid off. It's paying off particularly now which is so interesting as well because people always ask me like what is it like being a woman in your 40s and you know is the work drying up and it's so hard for you at this age but this is the best time of my career ever and I want to say that because yes. it's so important because so many people think oh as I get older that you know things start ending and you know I should stay at home and just I don't know <laughs> sit in my rocking chair mm -hmm. but like actually life can take off at any age you know Amen. what I mean it's up to you it's about your mental state mm -hmm. and literally at 43 this is the the, the best time of my life. There you go. Yes. I like that. Amen. Naomi Harris is here. You got an OBE. I did, from the Queen, no less. Do, can you explain to Americans what that is? Yes, it, it's basically a fancy award <laughs> okay. So it, from the Queen, um, and it basically means I'm an officer of the British Empire. Wow. Yeah, so it's for my services to the acting profession. So you it's a pretty big in, deal. That, yeah. Right? You could, huh? you could get us in clubs for free with that? Or um, no. No, okay. No. okay. I could possibly get you an invitation to the palace, maybe. <laughs> fuck a club. We're going to go to the palace. Wow. Fuck that club. Not clubs, not yeah, clubs. Fuck, fuck but that maybe club. the palace. <laughs> That's nice. That's but it's, it's really interesting, actually, with the OBE because you don't know how you got nominated. It takes about, I think it's about 12 people who have to vote for you and they have to write in um, letters independently and it goes to committee, but they can never reveal who it was that did that. So I can't even thank the people that got me the OBE because they can never say that it was them. Can you ask people to write for you and just pretend like you didn't know? No, I don't think you can. Oh. I don't know. Well, I, well, I certainly didn't. I didn't even, I didn't even know that was possible. <laughs> right. yeah. yeah, I didn't nope. even know the process of getting an OBE until I got one. Nobody just kind of saw you in public and went, 
No, 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 you no, know, no, nothing. I give you the eye like you know that was me, right? You know, it was me. It was me. me. I would have done that if I'd given someone an OPE, but no. Just point at you. <laughs> well, I want to laugh about something. I hear you speaking. I love your accent. Do you find though, Naomi, that Americans do really awful British accents, but British people do very good? Uh, English accents like um, Idris Elba I had no idea he was British you know uh-huh. he was on the wire for so long so many actors yeah. that we love and appreciate they're British and it's like wait a minute you're not from New York you're not mm-hmm. you guys do you laugh at us trying to do British be honest um, maybe a little bit <laughs> 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 no, but the thing is, it's because we're exposed so, to so much of your culture. You know what I mean? Oh, okay. Your movies dominate our theatres back home in England, That's you know? And okay. your TV dominates, you know, our TV uh-huh. show. You're, wow. It's full of your TV shows. You'd feel like you're in America when you come and watch British TV. Why so, is that, though? Because you produce so much more content than we do. Okay. okay. Because yeah. we care more about entertainment than overseas. You started the whole thing. I think you're ah. the entertainment That's kings. That's not true. You know That's what I mean? That's not true. Okay, that's fine. not true. Okay, no, no, no. started the, it. The then. British did. The British were established way before Americans were. Mm, you know, that's you got, true, but yeah, it's so. established in entertainment though, because yeah, I yeah. think this is the entertain. Well, it is. It, the it is the entertainment capital. capital of the world. Yeah, but y'all were doing all those Shakespearean plays and all that stuff before. <laughs> that's America, true, uh, but on America. on stage. TV okay. and film is that, that's American and music and the music, and the music. Ah. and the music too. The You're right, music. Naomi. Okay. Yeah. You're right. Wow. Okay. I have no problem with you because you got an OBE. I don't have. No, I don't yes, know what well, the hell I'm talking about. Fall um, back. I'm gonna get to black and blue, but um, um, DB brought up the Bond um, movie, and it, it was a long time. You brought up Idris. I remember people thought it was rumored that he was gonna get play the you know uh, the next Bond. Oh my Bond. gosh. You know, what? Do you know what? I started that rumor. Did you start that rumor? I started that rumor, and he is like Naomi. Please stop with that. And I, I didn't even mean to. It was just yes. a mistake. Because, you know, like a journalist asked me, who do you think should be the next Bond? And I was like, I did the PC thing. of like, oh, no, Daniel Craig is an amazing Bond. We should. And then they pushed me and they said, yeah, but if Daniel Craig wasn't available, who do you think should take over? And uh-huh. I said, well, I've just worked with Idris. I think he's amazing. And then the title was Naomi Harris says Idris Elba to be the next Bond. <laughs> and then literally oh. in every interview from now onwards, they always oh, ask him about Bond. So he hates me for that. <laughs> Yeah, but, but could, you could have willed it to fruition, you know, like by putting yeah. it out there. But it got so much backlash mm. because he's black. Mm. And, you know, around the world, people were saying, oh, he can't be Bond. Ain't that, crazy? that was written as a white yeah, guy. But to I be honest, that. To be yeah. honest, anytime anybody's name is put in the ring for uh-huh. Bond, there's a massive backlash. Yeah. No matter what okay. color they are, no matter where they're from. Daniel Craig everybody got it because like, he was dark hair. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He did. In the beginning, everyone was like, he'll be the worst Bond ever. Mm. And look at him. He's mm. like the most successful bondable times like uh-huh. the last three bond the last two bond movies rather have broken a, a billion dollars wow. like no okay. bond has ever done that before. so the people don't know what they're talking about yeah exactly All right. uh, mandela long walk to freedom um winnie mandela gave you the ultimate compliment yeah, she and, did. and when she said this is the first portrayal of her mm-hmm. that she felt was accurate when yeah. you played winnie mandela what did that mean for you it meant everything because mm-hmm. I was so scared going into playing her because it's, you know, it's one thing playing a made up fantastical character because mm-hmm. nobody can say, well, you didn't do a good job because it was meant to be like this or what have you. But when it's a living yeah. hero icon, yeah. I mean, you really got to know what you're doing yeah. right? and you got to get it right. And you're doing it in South Africa as well. And then I'd already been to dinner with Winnie and met her and chatted with her. And I was like, wow, you know, this woman is, as we know, hugely powerful. Yes. And I want to honor her legacy. And to have her say that I did a great job, wow. Have you been back to That's South everything. Africa since? We went back to show the movie. Uh-huh. And uh, that was, and then I've been back a, a few times for photo shoots and things like that. Do people yeah. stop you, like in South Africa, and go, Whitney? No, no, they no, don't. No, 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 okay, okay, I'm just curious. I'm curious. No, yeah, no they don't do that. Um, and Naomi Harris is here. Black and Blue is a new film. Very powerful. I got a chance to witness it. Uh, DB did as well. Out this Friday. Tyree said... You should go Thursday night yeah, mm-hmm. midnight. at midnight to uh, mm-hmm. see this film. Um, and it's starring you as Alicia West, who's a police officer, a rookie police officer who witnessed corruption, witnessed some um, people being murdered uh, by your co-workers. And as a result of that, they're chasing you around the film to get the body cam mm-hmm. footage, which is evidence. And you're trying to do the right thing 
And these are conversations we have daily here in America. I don't know if they're having those in the UK. Yeah, absolutely. Everyone yeah. keeps asking me about that. And I'm like, yeah. we have the whole Black Lives uh, Matter movement uh, uh, uh-huh. there. You know, when Eric Garner happened, you know, that incident happened, we all marched okay. for Eric Garner. You know what I mean? Wow. Like, yeah, it, I think there's this sense that there's this real divide between yeah. the black, black experience and that it's so different in the UK. It's not, you know. Uh-huh. Um, there have been so many deaths in police custody of black, healthy black men. Wow. gone in healthy and ended up dead and there is, hasn't been a single police arrest in all this time in all not this time. one single arrest of a police officer for a black death in custody wow. so you know we we really we have the same experiences you have the same issues. it is yeah. still it's much more extreme uh-huh. in the US absolutely because the scale is much bigger but we have the same issues that we're dealing with that's 100%. interesting to know that's interesting to know so this movie it's is very notice. important to yeah. you obviously Tyrese uh, we asked him to uh, present a question for you, um, and that's what we do here because we knew you what? guys work together. So okay. he, he had a question for you. Here's what Tyrese wanted to ask you. What did he want to know? Dear Naomi, first of all, I love you. This is Tyrese. Um, it's been life-changing uh, to be a part of this movie with you. Um, I think one of the most mind-blowing moments for me that that means a lot to me as someone that's born in these ghetto South Central LA streets is knowing that you had retired Mm -hmm. from acting Mm -hmm. and she was almost at a year of being retired from acting and this black and blue movie brought her out of retirement. Mm -hmm. I just want you to tell people why of all the scripts agents managers blowing your phone up you turning down projects left and right please dive into what this movie means to you that made you say i'm coming out of retirement to do the black and blue movie oh my gosh don't you just love tyrese's voice can you just yeah. listen to that Blood all line. day? It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. He leaves me voice notes, and I'm like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> okay. Sell um, <laughs> those, Naomi. <laughs> Wake up. He's the new series. Yeah, okay. Okay, sir. We'll get some streaming money off that. <laughs> Good morning, boo. <laughs> but, yeah, he's right. You know, I, I did. I, was, I, was full, I thought I was done with acting. Mm-hmm. I actually told my team, like, I'm taking... I want, I want to stop acting. And they said, no, 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 please just take a year to just think about whether this is right for you. Mm. Um, and so I was eight months into this retirement, basically, and then they sent me black and blue. And I was like, guys, I said a year at least. Um, but I read it and I was just, I was totally blown away because it's everything that I stand for. Mm. You know, it's a movie that keeps you on the edge of your seat. That's a, a roller coaster ride of all kinds of emotions, but it has a powerful message and it's so socially relevant and so timely. Yes. I mean, it, it's so important and it's also inspiring as well, you know, and that is the kind of movie that I've always wanted to be part of. Because you can mix entertainment. People don't have to go to the movie theaters and switch off half their brain, Mm -hmm. you know. They can actually be entertained and also be inspired and educated as well, you know. Um, And that's what I wanted. And also I love playing a strong, powerful, independent black woman who is driving the story forward. Mm -hmm. Um, And she is the hero. She's the moral compass of this movie. How often do you see that? You very rarely see that. I mean, you don't. Yeah, and you do an excellent job. Like, I'm scared for you throughout the whole film. Thank you. You know, but it must have been easy for you guys because of the subject matter mm-hmm. to even pull this off in terms of your characters, was it? Is I don't think any role you play is ever easy. There's okay. always like huge challenges. Okay. And for me, you know, I'm I'm British and I'm playing an African American from a very specific community mm-hmm. and upbringing and you want to honor that in the very best way that you can. So, I had to deep dive and do as much research as I can, but I tell you, I could not have done this without Tyrese because wow. he was phenomenal. Like he was like, this is my experience growing up. So if anyone can teach you about it, I can and I'm going to help you. And he really held my hand throughout the whole thing. In the beginning, I was nervous uh-huh. because he was like, you know, let's spend some alone time. And I was like, alone time? Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> like, this is the era of me too. I'm yeah, not yeah, spending yeah, alone yeah, time yeah. with you. You know what I mean? With like, no. Mr. Sweet Lady. <laughs> yeah. With that voice? Yeah, yeah, no. Mr. Mr. Black Tie. <laughs> I met a scorpion. <laughs> <laughs> they got them zodiac signs. 
but no, he was totally genuine. You know what I mean? Mm. He just literally wanted to help me. And when my accent was off, he would tell me. And, you know, some people would be have a bit of ego about that. But I loved it. I was like, this is someone who really genuinely wants me to give the very best performance that I possibly can. And that's because the movie is that important. You know, mm-hmm. he really cared. But you also camouflage yourself really well. Like, I, just watching the clips and the trailers that's been playing for the past week and a half or so, I would have never, like, I know you. And then it was like, you walked in here today, I was like, oh, my gosh. Like, you completely keep pushing it and pushing it and mm-hmm. flipping it on us. And I love it. Like, it's kudos to you as well. Thanks. Even though you had the help yeah. of a Tyrese, I think still you add something that's really special because mm-hmm. you go unrecognizable in each film yeah. each project you just kind of surprise us each time mm-hmm. like a chameleon which I think is dope thank you I yeah. really appreciate it's that dope. but that's what I love you know what I mean I love to hide myself in the characters mm-hmm. you know what I mean really get under their skin and that's why I love playing completely different characters as well and I think that's the privilege of doing this job because I think we go around thinking that we're all one person mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. in life we, we get to play only this one role mm-hmm. right, but right. acting allows you to come out of yourself and to play all these different roles and then you discover that you have all these kind of characters in, inside of yourself. Mm-hmm. Like you don't think, you know, you, you relate to someone else's experience and you think like that person is so different from me. I could never do that. I mean, that was my issue, I have to say, when I first of all got the part of Paula in Moonlight mm-hmm. because I was like, she's a crack addict. I don't even drink. I've never drunk or smoke or anything like that. I've never certainly never dealt with drugs. Like, how am I going to play this woman? Mm-hmm. Um, and I had so much judgment of her. And then you deep dive into the experience and you realize, ah, oh, there is some massive similarities between me and her. And this distance that you always think that's so great between you and another human being is way smaller than you think. And I love that mm. because that's how you keep expanding as a person. Steep, keep growing in compassion mm-hmm. as well for other people. Amen. Naomi Harris is well here. Said. Black and blue this Friday. DB, you got a quick question? Just real quick, because um, you brought up Moonlight and you got a lot of praise for that with Golden Globe and Oscar nominations. And a lot of times when you get that kind of praise, it can put pressure on a person to mm-hmm. what's the next project you're going to mm-hmm. dive into and like mm-hmm. what's the next role you're going to take because of that praise so mm-hmm. did that have an effect on you deciding let me step back because this might be a little too much you know what? it was it was a different experience for me with moonlight it was because of the whole award seasons to be totally honest it was like i was on that movie for three days that's how long it took me to shoot it but i was promoting it for five six months and when you're promoting you're not doing the things that you really love like what I said I love is like getting under the skin of a character and being them and connecting with them instead you're doing all the red carpets and the glamour and the, the and and that was not me and it kind of like made me lose myself and so mm. that was the reason to be honest that I was like I really needed to take a break and I never really I don't I'm really weird like in in my normal life I ask people all the time like should I do this should I date this person should I go here should I do it? like all these other decision, decisions I kind of outsource, but in my career, it's all about my gut. I just always connect with what feels right to me, and that never leads me wrong. So wow. I don't allow those outside influences to, to get to me. Naomi Harris, y'all. You ask if you should date a person? You do I your, do. You do. Like, <laughs> is he right? I don't know. What does that feel like? You know, <laughs> damn, are you single? Are you single? Oh my God. Wow. <laughs> Well, actually, <laughs> she it tell the whole of America now. Get it, girl. Don't do these Americans. Like they don't do the American. Yeah. Estelle, Estelle did the American guy. That's right, Estelle. All right. Um, so you are single. <laughs> no comment. Oh, that means no. That means no, that means no comment. She chilling yeah. with somebody. Possibly. Possibly. See? Possibly. <laughs> no one's serious. No one's right. serious. Anyway, okay, okay, so the okay, door okay, the okay. door is still open. Okay, for anyone good, that's good. out there. Yeah. Out there. Naomi <laughs> is chilling. Yeah, okay. Right. She's just chilling. Okay. Right. We know. She ain't got no ring. Well, she does have a ring on her finger, but that's not what it means. Yeah, it is. What okay, it means. cool. Yeah. Okay, so this is great. Uh, we got what we call a mystery sack for our first time um, guest, <laughs> Naomi, and it's just a, a, a just an array of questions. Because we'll say somebody's coming on the show, people send in questions that yeah. can't call in, and they're all fun. You can answer honestly. Okay. All right, here it is, Naomi Harris. Go ahead and reach in. Dig deep. Dig deep. <laughs> Put your hands into Sway's sack. That sounds gross. 
<laughs> it sways mystery sack on Shade 45. Okay, Naomi, I'll break it down. You have to pick out three questions. Read them out loud one at a time. You have to answer honestly. What does it say? First question. <laughs> wow. <laughs> this is a question and a half. Oh, my goodness. If you had no choice but to lead a recovery session for a former KKK member. Holy shit. What do you think would be on the agenda? Oh my God. What? Wow. Who sent this in? <laughs> what? Wow. No initial oh person. my goodness. Nothing. Mm. Nothing Re- there. Re- recovery Jeez. session. What would what, what, what be on it? What would be on Wow. Wow. Um, I wouldn't even know where to begin with that one. Um, Watch Black and Blue. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Thank you for saving me. Damn, That's PB. where we start. That's where we start. We watch black and blue together. Okay. That's it. Next question. Next question. Number two. And if you want to answer any more for me, that would no, be great. Right. No, I not. might not have a job tomorrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Chill out, One baby. more question to be his last. <laughs> um, what would a world populated by clones of you be like? Oh, these questions are so cool. <laughs> these questions I love them um it would be a bit strange I think because <laughs> you would be having people who like don't know who their real identity is like they'd be switching it up on you do you know what I mean oh, like true. everybody be changing all the oh, time right, yeah. An yeah yeah <laughs> like you're doing last that one deep dive into characters what's the very first task our next president should complete when in office Ooh. Mm. Mm. My gosh, there's so many big ones out there. Wow. I suppose, you know, my, my biggest concern is about the climate. Okay. Mm. You know, um, I, I so don't have time for any, any climate deniers mm-hmm. because, you know, the situation is real mm-hmm. and uh, everything else we're facing pales in comparison mm-hmm. to if we don't have a planet to take care of and to live on and inhabit and clean air and to breathe and, and clean water to drink. And that's what we're facing at the moment. There's a real crisis coming. So I would say to the next president, your task is to deal with that. There it is. Naomi Harris, thank you. Naomi! Thank you for coming by. Thank you for having us. No, so much fun. Okay. Thank, yeah. you. Yeah. thank you. Thank you. are going to be all right. Yeah. All right. Black and Blue is out this Friday. Make sure you check it out with Tyrese and Naomi Harris. Mike Coulter is a good friend of ours. Reed Scott, Bo uh, Knapp, uh, Nefessa Williams, also a friend of ours. will be there, uh, be on that screen as well. Thank you for coming by. Yes. It was Come good. back, thank okay? Come back. Anytime. Anytime. All right. Cool.